Coming to you from sunny California and the Great White North. Get ready. We are breaking down the obstacles on the Armchair Ninja Podcast. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Armchair Ninja Podcast. It is Sunday, November 8th. 2020. My name is Rich, and joining me for the AW12 finale is Bajan. How you making out? Woohoo, man! Yes, well, it's finally here. I am feeling fantastic, Rich. I mean, I you know I don't want to. This is a joyous occasion and everything, but I just gotta say, man, it's been a hard year. It's been a rough, rough, like you know, uh, time for all of us in America. And this has been a absolutely historic week. And um, yeah, I'm feeling good, man. <laughs> it, it is such a historic week. And yeah, I know I don't like, you know, going into all the, you know, the stuff outside of, you know, the main show. But I got to say, after like all of this negativity and bad vibes and just desecration of a title, I am so incited and uh, proud to say that we have a brand new American Ninja Warrior with an asterisk. Congratulations, <laughs> Daniel Gill. I am so happy for you, my man. Yes, very happy for Daniel Gill. Uh, a very well-earned victory. Uh, exciting finale. I, a weird season, but uh, it's all said and done. Yeah, I, I mean... Let, how do you feel when it's all said and done about the format and the changes? Like, let's cha- take everything out of the equation, right? COVID or whatever, right? But just by itself, um, and not trying to compare it to A and W proper because I, I think that's a little unfair, like the Vegas finals. But just you know, looking at it as a whole, did you enjoy this? I enjoyed it. I can't divorce it from everything else, though. Really, like at at the end of the day. Um, I can't look at it in a bubble. If I look at it, Mm. considering everything, I am thrilled that they did it. I'm very happy uh, with what they're able to do with the time that they had and and all the limitations. Uh, But if this, if you took away all those things and told me this was A&W this year, I'd have been pretty annoyed. (laughs) Like at the end of the day. (laughs) I mean, for me, looking at it in the bubble, um, just away from everything, I'm actually very up on this show. I think all things considered, they made an amazing show and product for this. Um, I'm a little, I guess, disappointed with how the finals went. But other than that, I got to say that I really enjoyed this method of them having a close course, them being safe, them actually having all things considered some pretty good storylines and in introducing these ninjas and, and the course is I can't complain too much about, um, I will give my nitpicks later about the finals of how they did it. But other than that, I, I'm pretty actually happy with everything that, that we got this season. I mean, think about it. Most sport based sports based shows where you get like what thousands of people from around the country, like most situations, this isn't g- going to be happening. I mean, even reality shows like Survivor, where people are off in the middle of nowhere, which should be like the easiest thing ever to make during this pandemic they aren't having it but yet we get a and w so i am super happy that we've got this yeah again grateful for what we got um and it was entertaining uh and thank you to the producers and and the ninjas for for going out there and doing this um just glad we got some a and w it it does it is a nice pick me up to have uh some ninja in our lives so thank you all yes so let's step through the actual finale what we got um it progressed faster than i expected i wasn't sure how they were going to do all the runs uh in this one episode but they'd managed to do it and it didn't feel rushed um that was part of my worry was that they were going to be doing a lot of fast forwarding didn't happen it felt like a very measured uh pace yeah but i mean one thing that i have to say because it's all over online is so they sure skipped john alexis jr this whole <laughs> yes <laughs> this yes, whole season did. i mean i feel like ev- like last episode in this episode they gave everybody their time but john alexis jr man i i don't know i'm sure i i'm curious if he had some connection with the whole he sh- how, sh- who shall not be named you know um i know he wasn't on the team but maybe like that guy was like on the sidelines or something because i just don't understand why else he would just be completely shafted throughout the entire season. There are rumors. I'm not going to spread the rumors further. 
um, of what happened. I, I really don't know. Everybody seems like everybody's just guessing and repeating the same rumor at this point. So, uh, yeah, if anyone knows, curious, uh, this will be our last episode for the season. So no worries about us spreading it in the next episode or anything. Uh, just for our own curiosity's sake, John Alexis, um, completely uh, overshadowed in the earlier episode, completely like not shown. And then the only fast forward in the finals Um yeah, stealthiest ninja. Well, maybe second stealthiest, but I mean, like, really, really didn't get a <laughs> no, lot no, no. of uh, airtime. We're not giving any other awards to. <laughs> so no, John no, Alexis gets that. <laughs> yeah, uh, no ninja awards, no stage five this year, unfortunately. Um, but yes, John Alexis, the unofficial winner of the stealthiest ninja award. Congratulations! I'm sure you're so happy to win that. Yeah, everyone's favorite award. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so the chorus at the beginning here was actually uh, the same. So thankfully, because it would be kind of hard to compare them if they weren't. Yeah, I'm actually happy. Usually I'm a little annoyed with the same course, but I mean, I think it's quite fair for this to be the same course. Right, Rich? I think (laughs) it'd be even worse if it wasn't. It'd be the first time in history we ever complained about them changing the course up between episodes. Yeah, I would be pretty upset. Uh, First up in the course, let's do these runs here. We've got Jeshua Lewis, uh, who almost got... (laughs) who was probably the runner up for stealthy as ninja um he was on joe's team and kind of got the shaft earlier on but we got to see him in all his glory here uh yeah i I gotta say before you go on to his to his run man just this vignette alone like i like the fact that they introduced him and he actually had had quite an interesting story like i actually wanted to find out more about him and his family they're in an rv with like an insane amount of like his family is not small and they're like all living in this little tiny RV. I mean, well, it's not tiny, tiny, but it's an RV. Right. And they're traveling the country. This is like awesome. Um, but at the same time, I, I wonder because you're not really going to have much privacy, <laughs> but I don't know. I, I look at this and I'm like, damn, that is awesome. I want to I want to learn more about his family's adventures and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. And he did really well um, to make it to the finals. He did get saved by Joe, as they mentioned, but, you know, he made it to the finals on his own. He got it through the semifinals um, and did quite well. He ended up going out on slam dunk after hitting his head on the transfer, which he wasn't even quite sure what had happened. Uh, So, yeah, I mean, a good ninja, a good story. um, No complaints. Yeah. The number one thing that really hit, like, stuck out to me looking back at this episode was... If you remember, Rich, we looked at this course and the number one thing we said is of all the obstacles to bring back slam dunk, you guys are going to bring back. Really? But, yo, that (laughs) obstacle has taken out a lot of ninjas. I'm I am so stunned by that. But, man, that that slam dunk, I don't know what it is if they I don't think they changed anything this season. Maybe I'm wrong, man. They did. Um, I think they made three of three little transitions other than two. But other than that, I mean, I don't know, but. I consider me surprised in a good way of the fact of how brutal that obstacle has become this season. Yeah. Yeah. We were wrong. Uh, I have to say it, it definitely played a factor. We saw it take out some top ninjas and uh, yeah, they did ramp it up. I think the other thing they did besides adding another transfer was um, they offset them. Right. So the last one, actually they have to land higher than they, they jump from. So I think there is a little more difficulty to it too. Well, it's good to hear. Yeah. Um, we got to move on to this next ninja. Um, the legendary cake ninja, David Wright, takes the course. <laughs> you know what? I have to give my applaud to the producers. Um, they show David Wright in not his annoying, or I, I shouldn't say him being annoying, but just an annoying sense of being, quote unquote, the cake ninja, which I don't get me started. Um, they actually like showed him in, you know, more about him as a person and his feats and everything like that, going less of a character and more of like, you know, an actual legit competitor. And I appreciate this because David Wright is very, very talented, both him and his brother. So I really appreciated both the approach of how they promoted David Wright and his brother. You say, you say his bright, you talk about Amir Malik. When you say his oh, brother. sorry. Yeah, it's not his brother, right? That, Amir Malik <laughs> no. is somebody else's brother. Sorry, but um, that's right. So Amir, yeah, his, they, his play it up friend as or whatever. Yeah, well, they're friends and they look alike. So then, yeah, I get it. It's funny that you call them. Does Malik though. have an older brother though? Is that the third person on their team? Am I messing this up? You're messing it up. Yeah, <laughs> quite sure. <sighs> whatever. Anyways, they are super talented, both of them. So yeah, 
I mean, they still have some really annoying, you know, things in the vignette, but it's it's less it's less bad, like annoying. Yeah. I, I was almost annoyed that at them for making it less annoying. I was like, oh, that's not gonna be much to rant against in this. This was okay, and they like they <laughs> played it up well. I mean, ah, whatever. Um from that perspective, yes, uh, definitely it was good that they highlighted David Wright's talents. Um, and then just before he fell early in the course on the falling shelves, it's like, come on. Like, this is the time you played it up. I thought he was going to do really well. Yeah, sucks to see. But, I mean, at least they're going in a, in the right direction with with him, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Have the, have the cake on his shirt, and that should be about all it's mentioned about the cake going forward would be great. Um, after him, we had Amir Malik and we got to see whether he could beat David's, uh, position on the course and boy, did he ever, he had a great season and a great episode. Dude. Okay. So I I wonder, because I literally wrote this down. I don't write notes, but I wrote this down and I was going to text it to you, but I didn't want to, I didn't know where you were at watching this. I genuinely believe that they were giving Amir Malik like the winner's edit, quote unquote, like they were hyping this dude up, man. And it wasn't for no fault of their own. Like this kid is super talented. And I was like, is are we about to see like a Cinderella story? Like this complete unknown kid completely win the show? <laughs> I, and, this- I mean, it almost happened. But like for real, they were like, if you actually look at his edit, Amir Malik's edit from from earlier this season and in particular tonight, they were really hyping this kid up. Yes, they were. I had read the same thing into it. I'm like, why did I pick Michael Torres? Why didn't I pick Amir Malik? Because he has the winners at it 100%. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, it's easy to say like Daniel Gill or Adam Rail, right? But like if there was like a newcomer, man, this this was a kid. And it, it's honestly um, like warranted. He really showed that he has personality for days. I'm very talented, impressed with the personality. And all, not only that. But the entertainment factor with his approach to the course, it isn't that he's just, you know, doing it fast or technical or whatever. Like he's just going all the way through it. It's kind of like RJ Roman in a way, almost like almost quasi, you know, like, um, I don't know, hectic, frantic in a way. But he, he's get, getting through this. And and I think it's awesome. It gives me shades of like early Flip Rodriguez. Oh my God, like read my mind. That's exactly what I was thinking. Like that's who he reminded me of on the course. And I was just thinking that a second ago was early flip, right? Early yeah. others that like would go all out, um, like almost dangerously slow. But they, I feel like all the ninjas now pretty much, almost all, there's been a couple this season, I think that did go recklessly fast. But generally there's a, a caution to their to their speed now. Well, I find it really fun, um, and I think this kid's going to be a st- I mean, I don't want to say it like everybody, but I don't know. It, it's not just the fact that he's super talented, but it's the also the personality, you know? I, I mean, remember when we first saw Genie Ninja? <laughs> like, it was like, dude, this guy's got some personality. It, he's giving me a lot of that, those types of vibes. Yeah, yeah, definitely someone to watch. Um after him, oh, sorry, he actually shot over one side of the bar on Dragonback and went out there. It looked like he was going to finish the whole course, but he did have an early exit. Yeah, that was pretty surprising. Um, that said, he made it to the finals. So, he I did. mean, yo, the, the other thing, though, that was surprising, man, is we were expecting the, the the competitors in this episode to surpass the comparison from the first episode and that even... Um, was it Jesse LeBrock wouldn't even make it, but that was not the case at all. So, yeah, there were some pretty surprising falls, <laughs> all yeah. things considered when you look back, right? But <laughs> very yeah, happy to be this, wrong. This kid on that was one. very fast. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, after him, we had the fast forward of John Alexis Jr., which we did mention briefly before, uh, who ended up going out on Slam Dunk. I mean, I wonder how many people didn't even realize that he was on the season. Um, you can call me one of those. I hadn't even realized it until we saw him that something was up. Yeah. It was weird. Um, but moving on past him, we had Daniel Gill, uh, the Kingdom Ninja, take the course. I was a little worried with the placement. I was like, oh, does Daniel not make it? Like, what's going on here? Uh, no cause for concern, though, because he was 
yawning again on the course and ended up taking it all down and with ease um, with the fastest time to that point absolutely makes everything look so effortless. Like it's just so crazy the level that he is at. Yeah, he's just so good. I really don't have anything to say other than who was this random? I, I feel like I should know these ninjas, but who's the ninja with the spray bottle just randomly spraying water in the air? And why do I care? Like, why do why do they keep showing him spraying water in the air? Like, <laughs> that <laughs> right. was almost annoying. I'm like, who is this guy? Why is he doing this? <laughs> so like, he... I get I guess everybody has to have a shit, but that was like, oh, I don't know. I was like, get him off the screen. Go back to Daniel Gill. I don't care. It was overplayed for sure. Um, he's very entertaining. Uh, we have seen him in previous seasons. He's the janitor at um, Iron Sports. Wow, I'm out of practice. Iron, is that right? Iron Sports, the the gym that Daniel's at. Yeah, just imagine like R.J. Roman having to like play guitar every time we see him. Yeah, or, like me yeah, as yeah. librarian having to read a book, or you like having to like I don't know have a podcasting mic. Like, <laughs> it can get really annoying. Imagine the Cake Ninja always eating cake. Oh my god, I would be so annoyed. Like, <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> at least this guy's got a spray bottle. Imagine like having to eat something every time. That'd be awful. What about what? Isn't there like a the bug ninja? Like imagine that poor guy always having to eat like a tarantula every time he's on the screen. <laughs> yeah, we don't. We definitely don't want any more bugs back. We don't want. Um, yeah, let's 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 keep the bets out of it and keep Akbar and Matt. You know, man, speak for yourself. I like the bug bets, man. <laughs> <laughs> but everybody else, yeah, that's uh, I agree. Um, so moving on from Daniel, who just crushed it, and really, there's not a lot to say there. We had Thomas Stillings, and we do have a lot to say. Yes, very nice to see Thomas back, but awful to see that he ended up going out on the falling shelves. Um, tried to do a uh, little something different on the on the uh, X's, basically trying to transition with one hand, got off balance, started them swinging, and then basically ramped up the difficulty on an already difficult obstacle. Yeah, it just did not work for him. But I mean, I I, I applaud him for trying something new. I guess I don't know if the finals is the right time to try something new, <laughs> you know. But hey, it is what it is. That said, Thomas Stillings. Always entertaining, and I'm so happy to see him. But we've got to talk about the vignette, man. You're skipping all these vignettes. I mean, a very tragic story. Well, I shouldn't say tragic, but you know what I mean. Like, really sad story about his young wife and him. Luckily, it seems like she's okay. Um, and, yeah, I mean, I just hope in the future we get to see more of a happy Thomas Stillings that everything works out for him. And, you know, um, it, it's sad to see him, you know, and, and his wife going through tough times. They are so young, you know. Um that said, Genie Shorts. I don't know. Thumbs up, in my opinion. No, I, I can. I'll dig the Genie Shorts. It's fine. Yeah, I didn't catch. I they don't stand out enough for me. And thank you to, and I hope I'm pronouncing this right. Rome Stillings, who messaged on our YouTube. Uh, I believe, if I remember correctly, that's Thomas's brother. Um, Sounds is about going, right. Is going to make sure that Thomas knows um, that we called out last time that he needs to bring back the pants. Like they're they're very critical to his sh to the stick on the course we don't we know we know he's talented we know he's personally and he doesn't technically need them but we feel like or we mentioned last time how um, we thought it was great for his segments and uh we'll keep him coming back hopefully yeah you're never going to hear me complaining about uh you know genie pants uh, on the course uh, we need more genie pants but <laughs> but hey at least we got something um i'm just happy to see him back on the show and at least you know in his personal life Hopefully things are, you know, a lot better than than they were a few months ago. Yes, yes. Um, all our best wishes to Zoe um, and to Thomas um, and look forward to seeing you next year. Yeah, I mean, imagine. I mean, they are so young, man. Imagine like having to be that young and going through such hardships that they're going through that. That's brutal. It is for sure. Um, and I, I feel like they did such a great job and Thomas did an amazing job in the qualifiers covering it. And, and bringing us into that story and sharing it with us. So, um, yeah, there's only reason I didn't delve into it again here, I guess. Yeah, um, I, I look forward to happier times with Thomas Stillings next year. Because, exactly. yo, I think we can all agree. If there's one thing Thomas Stillings has got, it's a personality. Like, <laughs> this dude's fun to watch on, on the show. And I'm not just saying that from a biased point of view. Uh, this guy really is entertaining. So I want to see more of that. 
Perfect. And speaking of entertaining, we had RJ Roman take the course next. Yes. I love this dude. I like I almost forgot how fun this guy is. Right. Because like we, we, we just t- usually see him up, like them talking about RJ Roman. He plays guitar and he's really fast. But yo, this dude is awesome. And, and I really like the fact that he was showing off how like crazy he is around his grandma. His grandma just looks like the sweetest lady in the world. I just want to give that woman a hug. I mean, it's a pandemic, so probably not right now, but like air hugs. You know what I mean? <laughs> right. She was great. Uh, the segment was great. I loved watching her standing as he's running around parks and stuff. I don't know why it worked, but it did. It was great. Um, really good segment. Um, but RJ, who was crushing the course, as always. Uh, Yo, and- he was going so fast. <laughs> I know. He was looking to take down the top time. Um, ended up going out on the second slide. Uh, the bar went crooked on him. Uh, sorry, the second slide on Dragon Back. Um, so his run ended early. That sucks because I was really excited to see this guy um, in the finals. Like just watching him go through the course, like you just perk up and you're like, yo, he is going so fast. He's going to destroy that finals course um, or the f- whatever the heck that final thing is. Um, if I remember correctly, he was knocked out at the last the last minute right um and that just really sucks because this guy i i wouldn't say he would win the whole season i'm not gonna say anything like that but i have a feeling he he probably would have made it to like the semifinals or the finals or whatever the final four is yeah it's possible um and if for those of you that are into conspiracies and like reading into the edits of the show go check out the anw subreddit and you're gonna have a field day going over the times that were shown and Amir versus RJ and a whole oh, bunch no. of stuff. Oh, yeah. No. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's all out there. So have fun with that. I'm not getting into it. Um, sad to see RJ go out early. Um, let's just move on. <laughs> I don't want to go into the conspiracies <laughs> this time around. Hey, I wasn't there. I'm <laughs> yeah. Uh, but I do agree with the point that's been made that they should always show the clock. I think that would be better. Just always show the time up there. Um, Jesse Graff was next to take the course. Very excited to see Jesse back on the course. Uh, excited Man, to see I how she would do. Super psyched for her. Yeah. Yeah. Like, how were you feeling? Like going into it, I really thought she was gonna like get at least halfway into the course. I was expecting a dragon back fall, um, just because I felt like if she took down the whole thing, she'd go last. I was like, yeah. oh, no, she's not going to do it again. But, you know, she'll probably go deep and maybe her time won't be good enough to move on. Just judging by the placement of her edit uh, more than anything. I mean, that's that's good. That's a good guess. I was expecting. Um, yeah, I was thinking maybe the uh, the basketball one. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, though, very shocking fall. I like very audibly asked when she went out on the falling shelves. Um and actually injured her shoulder in the process. Yeah, so I I remember looking on her Instagram at some point and seeing that she got surgery, that she, you know, just finished healing from a surgery. I don't remember, though. Was it her shoulder? Like, it was this an injury that she required surgery for? Yeah, I read a little bit here before we recorded. Um, I don't know how accurate it is or anything. It sounds like she did actually injure her shoulder, that she has had surgery to uh, to repair that. And also mm. that she was running on a torn ACL for this whole thing. Oh, that I 100% knew. Did, like, or, or saw. When she was lining up to the courts, did you look at her knee? No. Dude, her knee was clearly, like, messed up. Her right knee, when you look at her on the course, um, I, I, it, it was, it's kind of hard to tell because it looks like she also has a, uh, I don't know if it was tape or if it was like a tattoo or something, but she had something on her knee, but also like the skin wasn't the, I mean, I don't want to talk too much into it, but basically if you look at her knee, her right knee, it looked very different from her left knee. I'll, I'll just say that right. you can look back and see it. And I was like, Oh, something is definitely wrong there. And it made me think that probably she was going, doing this with some major injuries. Jeez. Like that's, that's crazy that uh, she would do that. Not surprising, but crazy. Um, I hope uh, she's taking care of herself and uh, making sure she's rested and recuperated. Uh, we want her to succeed uh, long term in both A&W and her career. So uh, please, Jesse, take care of yourself. 
Yeah, one hundred percent. You you would hate to see her having a career. I wouldn't say ending injury, but like an injury that could be so much worse or exacerbated. You know, just by risking it on this course. But you, it, it, it also is just so good to see her. Um, so if she were to go out, I mean, she went out hurting her shoulder. I wish that wasn't the case, but at least it wasn't her ACL because I know you really damage your ACL. That is that is some very bad times for you. All right. After Jesse, we had Adam Rail take the course, uh, one of our favorites, um, who had, for his segment, Olympic silver medalist Blaine Wilson watching on the virtual sidelines. Which, okay, come on, man. <laughs> this was so forced. <laughs> it was, but somehow it worked for me. And I had a feeling, because you messaged me about some forced um, storylines. I assume this is one you're talking about. Bro, like, come on. <laughs> it's... I like, like we it. have all I these storylines and then it's dude, have, it's out of nowhere like hey i look up to this guy and i'm so happy he's a fan now and all of a sudden i should care about this during the finals of all things like i get it i guess they had no other storylines for him but this was so forced they were like give us something new bro i guess i guess i felt it i mean it's propped up by vicky you know his mother being on the sidelines anyway so it's not really the whole storyline in a sense i don't know i thought it was kind of cute that he you know someone that he admired now his kids admire adam i i don't know I, that worked for me <laughs> well i'm glad it worked for you yeah i mean you write it I down was rolling I'm my eyes it so hard <laughs> <laughs> i'm reading it here going like that sounds terrible like when I read it out loud and I look at it, but at the same time, I didn't mind it on the show. It was good. Um, and Adam crushed it. He ended up completing the course. Like so happy for him. Adam uh, did a fantastic job. Yeah. After watching that segment, I knew Adam Rail was going to make it far because I'm like, <laughs> yo, there is, <laughs> there is no good reason this should be on, the te- <laughs> on, on like premier television but it is which means adam rail does something very goes quite far on this show oh what is the obstacle called the uh spin hopper when he had his thumbs like the way he's gripping the spin hopper i thought that was fantastic like god that guy's got just next level grip yeah he does um he must have some massive hands too man yeah i was thinking that too like how big are his hands to be able to do that uh, but after him, we had Jake Murray and other like so many of our favorites on this episode. Yeah. yeah. Oh, my I God. Mean, did Actually, I skip five in a row. Like, look at this lineup. I'm looking down here. So how is this not like the best episode we've ever had? Right. We go Daniel Gill, Thomas Stillings, RJ Roman, Jesse Graff, Adam Rail, Jake Murray, Joe Brosky. Like, oh, my God. Yo, I mean, we're in the finals and this is a season where they have just the best of the best, really. So. I, we shouldn't be that surprised, but it's really good. And that's maybe why I didn't mind so much of this season, even with the with the I guess the stages or the course being a little, you know, less than, you know, the Vegas ones. It's the they made up for it in terms of the talent, really. Yeah, we had an all star episode, I guess. So, I mean, that kind of works out. Um, But yeah, Jake Murray takes the course. No antics this time from Jake. Jake's all business now. Um which, you know, I appreciate. You know, he wants to win the money. Uh, I'm taking it very seriously. Uh, doesn't want to distract him. I, I'll, I'll handle that from Jake. I mean, I don't want it long term. But, yeah, you need to do that for a season, Jake. We're, we're all on board. Yeah, honestly, I'm cool with, the uh, like, I think the quote unquote, like, city, you know, courses are where you should do antics and everything like that. And I'm not saying nothing in the final should be antics, but I... I will give anybody a pass or I should, you know, I won't be complaining about anybody taking like the finals super seriously. Yeah. And he, he just destroyed the course. Like dude, straight up owned this course. I didn't think yeah, he did. anyone could take down this course faster than Daniel Gill did after the way he did it, especially the way, the way that Daniel took down the spider trap, which we didn't talk about. Oh my God. That guy just, Dude, killed that <laughs> that obstacle. Yeah, he flew up it like it was nothing. That was insane. Um, Jake didn't quite do that as fast, but he did the whole course um, at such a great speed. He was able to beat Daniel's time, like unbelievable run. And I'll tell you, I was really surprised because it never looked while Jake Murray was running it that he was 
I wouldn't say going fast. Like, I don't know. It wasn't like he was like flying through it, even like going into like transitioning from one obstacle to another. It wasn't like he was just running up to it. He like in going up to the dragon, whatever that thing is called. He like took a stop for a while, looked at it, cleaned his hands, then went on it. Like he was it looked like he was just taking his time. But then they shut the clock and it's like he's beating everyone. I'm like, really? <laughs> so I guess he was just going at a very good measured pace that was faster than everybody but you wouldn't guess it by just looking at his run yeah he was kind of using the joe morotsky school of speed where it's like just efficiency and moving through um through each obstacle and maybe limiting the time between the obstacles so less so than like the lauren ball like flat out running yeah, that said, I mean, like Daniel Gill, that, that final spider climb in, he kicked it into high gear. Ooh. That dude flew up that one, too. Um, yeah, great run by Jake uh, to get the fastest time of the night uh, with only one runner left, and that was Joe Morofsky. Yeah, and I will say this. Props to Jake Murray, because over the past few seasons, we've we've seen him go from a wacky, zany character that, you know, is in the upper echelon of Ninja Warriors to now being like one of the top premier ninjas. When you actually look about at like his past few seasons, like he's done very, very, very well. I wonder if that one season, I think it was like season 10, maybe season nine, where like, you know, he fell like super early on in the season and he completely like rebuilt himself. Like, I wonder if that was like his coming to Jesus moment or whatever you want to call it. Yeah, we've seen a few of the best ninjas have those seasons and with that early fall, like come back with an, an increased seriousness and like a, a focus that we didn't see previously, right? Where they were having fun and like really going like ridiculously fast at times, but with a recklessness that could cause early falls. And we just, once they seem to have that like qualifier fall, um, it really does seem to change up their approach. Uh, but that being said, we've never seen a fall like that from Joe Morovsky. The closest we had that I can recall is he had an early, he had like a stage one fall two years ago, was it? Yeah, that's what I'm thinking, two years. Um, but Joe is like very, very consistent, like way beyond just about anybody that's ever been on the show, making it a stage three a bunch of times, last man standing twice. Um, guy is just crazy good and does not make mistakes. And yet we see him go out on slam dunk. The obstacle we totally overlooked this season, man, I, even more than the obstacle, just poor Joe, like going into this episode, I was thinking about like, man, finally they give him an, a, you know, a situation where he's not too much of the bad guy. Cause like this whole season, <laughs> oh, yeah, he's been right. in a situation where he's like the bad guy if he wins. <laughs> and like, even this one, he's kind of the bad guy. He like kicks out. I forgot who was on the bubble, but it's not as bad. Right. But then out of nowhere, he falls and he doesn't even make it to the finals. When you think about it, it's Joe Morofsky. Like when you look at the season and you think about who are the clear cut, you know, people that are primed to win this season, it's Joe Morofsky and Daniel Gill. And then maybe slightly Adam Rail, right? Yeah. But <laughs> I mean, whoa, dude. Like out of nowhere, Daniel Gill doesn't even make it to the final eight out of some freak accident fall from slam dunk. Like, I feel bad for this dude. Th I mean, he <laughs> had a good season. season. Other than that, I mean, he got the mega wall. He got fastest time. Um, he did everything perfectly to this. He was hitting all the buzzers getting all of the things he got both the mega wall and moved to the power tower and won it to save his teammates. Like he made some money. I mean, he didn't get the grand prize, but he made some money and he did really well this season. So I didn't feel too, too bad for him. I mean, he did, he did extremely well. I guess you can't complain too much, but it kind of does sour, you know, I'm sure him a bit to be like the winner of everything, but the grand prize, <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah. um, I'm sure from everything I've seen about Joe Morosky, I think the title of American Ninja Warrior matters more. Now, that said, do we know if the winner of this season, are they American? Like, are they an American Ninja Warrior? Are they just the winner of the season? Like, how are they wording that? A&W champion, I think, was on the trophy. So, I mean, yeah, there you go. I mean, that's that's the title. They had to change that up along the way. Anyway, they everybody calls themselves Ninja, American Ninja Warriors. It's not like... At first, you know, that was the thing for seasons, right? But up until um, Jeff and Isaac took it down, 
It was who's going to be the first American Ninja Warrior. But really, they're all calling them. Everybody's calling themselves American Ninja Warriors. That's very true. So, um, and just so everybody knows, it's Jeff Braden. It's the first American Ninja Warrior. And that says differently is just wrong. Sorry. That's where they made up the title American Ninja Warrior Champion for Isaac to differentiate between the two. And that's what they've been using for anyone that takes it down now. A&W Champion, which is fine. Yeah, it's whatever. Um, all that being said, we then moved on to the Power Tower playoffs um, <laughs> with the top eight. So, <laughs> okay, so when they showed the the finals and I'm like, oh, my God, they're doing the Power Tower mm-hmm. and it's just the regular Power Tower. I was so annoyed, man. <laughs> I don't know about you. I was so annoyed. Um, yeah, give your thoughts just looking at the Power <laughs> Tower. I annoyed mean, nothing's the- changed. And- <laughs> Nothing's changed. It's exactly the same. And I'm just like, do I even want to watch this? Like, I was I was annoyed to the point of almost wanting to turn it off. If I wasn't covering the pot, eh, I probably still would have watched it. But I was like ready to just skip ahead. Like, because I, I just I didn't care. Right. It's just yeah. the the same old power tower and it's it's even worse than that it's almost insulting when you think about it like these competitors work so hard they've killed themselves all this time and then it comes down to the same old power tower that they're used to like it's not even slightly difficult and i i understand in the very final one they're gonna have the you know the slight whatever it is you know uh cliffhanger but that's really nothing either i mean this is just this is almost annoying of what they're presenting us. I will say um, when they switched it up, I was, I was a lot better with it when they switched it. Like I was like, when they added the cliffhanger, it wasn't a huge difference, but at least it was something. And I was happy that they put something in there. I, I actually will take that. I mean, I was happy, but the cliffhanger should have been here for the, for the final eight, you know? And then when it gets down to the final four and two, it should have been a completely different thing. Yeah. Yeah, well, here we argue. I mean, it, it's just a weird way to end off the season. But it is what it is. So let's let's run through uh, the the rounds. Uh, we can get through the first of them pretty quickly, I think. Yeah, it's anticlimactic. Almost as if, you know, you kill yourselves all this time, and then it all comes down to a rope climb. Mm-hmm. <sighs> Very similar. Yeah. Uh, Najee Richardson versus Austin Gray. Um, Najee trying so these to play... Match- <laughs> <laughs> we gotta talk about these matchups first off like i like the fact that it was it was ranked upon time and all that stuff yeah that was good <laughs> these these made for some very interesting matches where i was like this is awesome you know in a weird goofy way <laughs> like Najee richardson austin gray i would have never in my life you know <laughs> yeah and Thought Najee calling himself the underdog like i don't think you know what underdog means right now like it's but it was an interesting point that he's never been on the, the power tower before. So I was like, all right, well, maybe. I mean, it's it no, anybody's game. I, I will say this. I will say this. The the people that were actually able to compete on the power tower earlier this season had a huge advantage. Yep. Yes, a they did. massive advantage. I mean, that's another problem with them doing the same exact power tower. Like some of these people, I've, n- I've never been on this thing. And other guys know exactly what to do. And then when you factor in the fact point where almost all these runs are coming down to like less than a second. I mean, that experience really matters. Sorry, just another annoying point that I need to say, but like, yeah, if you, and I'm sure everybody that's listening, that's done this knows you do a course once you figure it out, like a different, you know, mechanisms or, you know, like, like my new details of the course. The second time you were that much more prepared and also the psychological aspect in it also plays a major factor. Yeah. There's a huge advantage to that, right? You think like, you know, you know how much you can get away with on that pole drop, right? Like how far down it's going to be, how slippery it is, like all kinds of things that could make a very, very big difference. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm curious um, out of all the competitors on this, did the ones that have been on the power tower before, did they all make it through? Well, uh, we can look at it while going through it. Yeah, we'll go through here. So neither one of these guys have Austin Gray took it home. Um, very close race. Um, good race. 
not much to say about yeah, it. Yeah, it was, it was actually really fun to watch. It, it seems to really come down to um, how well you can climb the, the like the ascending poles, like the transition with the. I, I don't even know what you call those things, the things that fall down <laughs> like those right. things. A lot of these competitors were able to just do them at the same speed. But really, the climbing seems to factor in a lot. Um, yeah, it was a good race. Yeah. Um... <laughs> like hey there's so much it's so little to say about these things just to make it that it's much worse boring. and the worst part is the final part of it where you are lacheting with those little descending things it's kind of slow <laughs> like, there's, <laughs> there's not much you can do man so yeah like i've had much more fun watching like ninja versus ninja and stuff like that yeah um lucas reale versus adam rail uh adam gained an early lead and just kept it all the way through and, yeah, uh, this was brilliant. like the probably the biggest destruction. <laughs> was this <laughs> the one where it was like just like yeah, like Adam Rail destroyed it, and Lucas Reality's like barely, I think, still on like a first transition jump when <laughs> Adam Rail is already hitting the buzzer. This was crazy. Yeah, that was that was not a close one. Um, but after them was Jake Murray versus Amir Malik. Um, Jake stumbled on the steps and smacked his face and Amir, uh, just ran through and completed the whole thing at a really good pace. Yeah. I mean, this was the one where like going into this, I was like, I think Amir Malik really got the winner's edit and I was really keeping my eye on him. And then sure enough, he destroys this one. And I'm like, yo, is this going to be the time where Amir like wins the whole season? I genuinely was believing this guy was going to win the whole thing. Yeah, uh, so the eighth seed, Amir, took out the first seed, Jake. Very shocking win. Wow, Jake was number one seed. He he had the fastest time out of everyone, huh? Yep, he was. That's crazy. Um, and then, then we had the number two versus number seven seeds, Daniel Gill versus Jesse Lebrack. <laughs> I feel so bad for <laughs> like, Jesse Lebrack. <laughs> like, Jesse, that is a tough draw to get. But, you know, I mean, um, she did great. Um, no complaints. Um, just there was no yeah. catching Daniel um it wasn't a very close race but um it was still fun to watch overall it was good yeah and she held her own it was not like she was going at like some snail's pace like she really gave it her all yeah yeah um perfectly fine um she probably would have she would have been pretty close to lucas i would say at least um yeah, yeah. uh so that meant that out of all the races, only one of the favorites actually won. It was Daniel. The other three were all upsets. Yeah. What was really cool about the final four is we had two, I guess you could call them kind of veterans, like Adam Rail and Daniel Gill, like the more well-known ninjas, and then two lesser-known ninjas in, um, oh my God, I'm blanking on the guy's name. With, uh, Austin Gray. What's his name? Yeah, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, Gray versus, um, you know, the, the rookie. So that was really cool because that meant that we'd have like a younger quote unquote ninja versus one of the more old guards, quote, so to speak. Yeah. Um, and then they changed up the course. They added the cliffhanger to Did it. They, which though? I mean, I thought it I was mean, going to play a bigger factor. I'll be honest. They did <laughs> skip by it pretty quickly and efficiently, but at least it was something I, I'll take. I mean, look at these something. ninjas, man. Like it, it's. These ninjas do cliffhangers like probably every day for a break, like in the while eating their breakfast with one hand. I mean, it's it's a little too late in my opinion. They should have added far other like more obstacles. Like add them some wing nuts, you know, have them like having to wing nut lache like ten feet, <laughs> you know, like to the side and then do stuff. Something. Yeah, I definitely needed more. Um so first up was Austin versus Amir. Um I'm here put up a good fight he ended up falling to the safety pads just trying to to catch Austin by the end um, but it didn't happen uh, Austin was the winner yeah I was I was stunned because at this point I was like Amir's winning it all he's gonna beat whoever <laughs> yeah. makes it like I was just so certain that he got the winner's head and it was winning this whole thing so I was like okay never mind it's gonna be Daniel Gill probably but we'll see yeah, Austin's one of my dark horse picks um, from a couple of years ago. I'm very glad to see that he, it's coming through. I thought he was going to do really well last season, and he had the unexpected fall. Um, glad to see he's uh, he's coming through this year. Yeah, that said, I mean, really, when it was Adam Morrell versus Daniel Gale, I'm like, this is the race to, you know, choose the winner. And um, 
I I really thought it was going to be close, but I still kind of thought that it was going to be Daniel Gill, which is weird because Adam Rowe wins everything, right? Once again, I will say, if you're into conspiracies and lots of extra details on the whole behind the scenes and how things can go wrong, I encourage you to check out A&W on subreddit. Um, there is some stuff that went on here that I don't really want to get into once again. At this point, I do want to get into it. What are you talking about, man? So I'm probably going to mess up some of the details, but from what I understand, um, and I'm going to, I am probably going to mess this up a little bit. So you know how the last shelf, um, some people have skipped it, right? They've like been able to yeah, grab and, it. And Adam Rail did it in the previous one, which was why I was wondering like why he didn't do it this time. Apparently he did in their first race and was told that it wasn't allowed he wa- no. I guess. Now, this is coming from, I believe, Joe Morawski's Instagram. His live, He did like a live feed or something or Twitch stream. I don't know. He streamed somewhere. And they uh, he let it slip that, yeah, I guess Adam won the first race, but they said that you weren't allowed to skip that last one. And to be fair, Joe even said they were told that when they were it was demonstrated to them that they weren't supposed to do that, that it had to be fully had to fully descend before they dismounted it. Then why did they let him skip it? Um, in his exactly. semifinals shouldn't have been able to apparently. So that's a whole other question, but so there's some controversy there. Um, and when the second race that we did see where, where it was so close and Daniel won it, to his credit, from my from my understanding, is he said they should race again, and they wouldn't let them. They said no. Daniel won it. That that's it. So I, you know, props to Daniel. Hmm. He didn't want to like have any controversy either. He wanted to make sure it was clear that what you know, if they split them, they had both won one. Let's do it one last time. But it didn't happen. Wow, that's that's messed up, man. But that said, major props to Daniel Gill. I mean. This guy has always been such a class act. I, you know, major props to Daniel Gale. I appreciate that camaraderie, um, the class actness, just being like, hey, we w- all, both won one. We should go to a third. It sucks that the producers didn't let them. But I mean, hey, it's a producer's decision. It's whatever. But oh, man, if I was Adam Rail, I'd be a little peeved, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. To me, that would have been the great solution, right? Like, OK, we both did it once. Let's go a third time, and that way there's no question, right? Like, I think that would have been a really good solution. And that would have added some major drama, too. Like, really, I would have liked to see that. Yeah, and then show it. Like you said, don't even just sweep that on the rug. Show us that. Like, wow, this is, like, exciting. Like, they've split it. They've both come out. Like, who's going to actually get the final win? Like, that that would have been a better finale in the end. <laughs> Much better. Um, So we end up, speaking of finales, it comes down to... Austin Gray versus Daniel Gill. Um, I actually didn't consider it in the bag. I thought I could have easily gone either way. You're crazy, bro. <laughs> you think it was close? I mean, it was close. It was close, but in my opinion, it was just 100% Daniel Gill. And I'm not trying to disrespect Adam Gray, like, you know, or, you know, Austin Gray. Good for you, buddy, but this is Daniel Gill. <laughs> Everything that I've seen over these past few years is. If you're up against Daniel Gill, you're going to, in a speed contest, you're going to lose. Yeah, I mean, that does seem to be the case. But that's kind of the nice thing with sports, right? When you look at it as a sporting event and you have these races, like it can go either way. Sometimes there's upsets. Sometimes we've seen a few of them right here. Um, but in the end, Daniel Gill, the uh, the opera singing... I forgot he sings opera. <laughs> Genius ninja from Houston, Texas, um, one of the best we've seen, was able to come through and and bring home the victory, and is going to be buying a house with his uh, with his wife. Yeah, and I'm really happy for him. I mean, he's a great role model for the sport. Um, I I don't I, I there's nothing really you could see bad about him. Seems like a, just a class act, a wonderful human being. And if you really look at it, it's it's one of those. Um, over the years, seeing somebody rise and finally get to like the top of the sport, right? It's not like he just came out of nowhere. Like this guy's been one of the top ninjas for a while now. And 
I'm just really, really happy for him. And I look forward to, you know, when a can come back proper, I really look forward to him being front and center, uh, you know, a great representative of the sport. Completely agree. Daniel's wonderful, um, deserves all the success in the world. Austin, um, still very early in his a career, uh, wishing him all the success in future seasons. Yeah, and really, I mean, we, we probably will see him getting maybe like, you know, a lot more you know, shine in terms of like airtime. I mean, Austin Gray, it's not like this is his first time going really far on the show. Right. But now, like, it's one of those things where you can't not ignore him. He just made it to the finals of the entire show. <laughs> so, I mean, I, I certainly would hope that they feature him more. Yeah. Yeah, I hope so. Um, but that is it. That is it for the season. A and W twelve is in the books, um, yeah. and that is it for our season as well. That is uh, how we're going to wrap it up for now. Potentially returning, um, assuming Bajan is willing, uh, we'll return for A and W season thirteen. One hundred percent, we're going to return, my man. Um, if you're up for it, honestly, we should still drink something in <laughs> of like a New Year's episode. Other than that, yeah, you know. Um, you know, uh, I got to say, this was a fun season to record. I missed you, Rich. I was I was so happy to do this season with you again, my man. <laughs> and, you know, hear everything that's going on in your life. Major congratulations to R- Rich over here. Going to be a, another granddad. Am I am I spoiling that? Should we cut that out or is that already in the No, world? it's out there. So, yes, okay. I, am, I am going to have a second grandchild um, in the coming year. So very excited for that. Congrats, my man. So good things happening um, throughout the world. Once again, this is a wonderful, wonderful week. That's all I'll say. (laughs) I'm so happy. (laughs) Uh, So that is it for this week and this season. Thank you all so much for listening. If you'd like to reach out to us, you can reach me as rich at ninjapodcast.com. I am at ninjapodcast on both Instagram and Twitter. And Bajan, how can they reach you? Man, you can hit me up at Twitter and Instagram at Bijan151. That is B-I-J-A-N-151. Particularly, you're on one. Check out that Instagram. I only go on Twitter every once in a while. All right. Thank you all so much for listening and have a wonderful year. Peace, love, and deuces, y'all. <laughs>